Prime Minister Andrew Olness engaged Jamaicans living in New York City in I the United States of America impressed. at the Jamaica Consulate is, uh, General is, uh, of Jamaica. Kind of going through a hard time right now. It's Saturday morning on the Gil Bailey Show. We chat the with the godfather move, of Caribbean Radio, Gil Bailey. Yeah. If you don't play it in a dance hall, that's so nice. Blues rock reggae with Just Six and come chat with me's artist spotlight. RCM Development and Community Services fundraiser at Molina's at Lake Isle Country Club. It is important to have education. And the only thing to bring you out of poverty is education. You're watching Come Chat With Me, a Caribbean lifestyle magazine. And I'm your host, Ziggy Bless. The Prime Minister meets with the diaspora in keeping with his mission to update Jamaicans overseas and discuss matters involving Jamaica. Eternal Father, bless We are this incredible people with this incredible talent. God has blessed us differently from everyone else. But if you are truthful to yourself, you would say we have not lived up to our potential. And it's not too late for us to start living up to our potential. Marcus Garvey had that dream for us. And if you read Marcus Garvey's philosophy, he always thought that we had it in us. But somewhere along the line, we just lost the practicalness. But it's not too late. I'm deeply honored and happy to have the Prime Minister here speaking with us today. It's his first time speaking to the diaspora here in the consulate. So you see how lucky you are? Crime. I know it's a, a concern for many Jamaicans, the, the crime situation. I want to assure you that the government has put in place several crime-fighting strategies, uh, but more than that, we have put in place several national security strategies that are all working to improve the safety and security of Jamaica. We have increased spending on education, uh, and now we have ensured that at the high school level, you can go to school without being turned away for lack of being able to pay the tuition fee. Government pays that for you. So it's... <laughs> and students who go to school and are not able to afford lunch, we have increased the number of days that students are able to get um, lunch support in schools. Free comes a responsibility um, and um, there are many schools that thought about that um, but if the Prime Minister says so I guess it is so I mean there's still challenges for our kids to attend high school there's still challenges for our kids to attend school period so it's it's a it's an evolving situation it's obvious that he has a great deal of interest in making sure that what he says manifests and that our children gets the best education possible because at the end of the day if, if education infrastructure is not there for our children to excel then Jamaica will not benefit. I was very impressed with our Prime Minister presentation you know th this afternoon or this evening and you touch upon very valid points like the first thing he addresses was the crime situation yeah. and the things that he has put in motion to really curtail it or control it or eliminate it. I am here tonight to reconfirm my commitment to my island home and to say to all of the people here present that we owe a debt of gratitude for our integrity and for what we have become in the United States of America. We are concerned about the crime that's happening to our young children in Jamaica. I addressed the Prime Minister, I spoke to him about that, I asked the question and he addressed it. But one of the things that I really do like about Jamaica, about what the Prime Minister said was what he's doing in regards to places like Port Royal and Spanish Town and preserving what can be for the tourism sector. Tourism. Tourism is doing excellent. We hit our four million visitors um, last year. And uh, you know the target is to get to five million, and I think we can. I think we can. Um, we are 
finally going to do something uh, productive with Port Royal. The Port Authority has been given the mandate to first mandate is to preserve the history. You know, there's a there's a view that if you have uh, heritage sites and historical sites, you mustn't use them. That's not the Jamaican reality. What I find in Jamaica is that if you don't use them, you will lose them. There are some persons that I like to big up, as we say in Jamaica. Um, there are lots of persons here in the diaspora, you know, who we don't know, and they are coming around now. And first and foremost, I want to say welcome to any of you watch Poen here? Yes. Okay, so I'm a Power fan. Can't miss me. If you watch Power, you're hooked. It's true to life. So forget about the drugs and the bad words. It's true to life, okay? Now, um, a gentleman, young man called Michael Rainey Jr., a.k.a. Tariq, is here with us tonight. His mom is Jamaican, and I want to tell you, he's more Jamaican than his mother. He wants to go to Jamaica all the time. So where is Michael? Please welcome Michael Rainey Jr. And his mom, Shauna. Welcome, Shauna. Come chat to me, we're in the house. And I'm standing next to Michael, better known as Tariq, from the It movie, Power. How are you doing, my brother? I'm good, I'm good. How are you, bro? Everything nice, man. You were here earlier and listened to the Prime Minister, you know what I mean? What did he get from all what he said? What do you, what do you take away from, from his message? I mean, he's just sending a positive message. I mean, Jamaica is a, it's a, it's kind of going through a hard time right now, so we need the positivity, and, and I'm glad I was here to hear it, definitely. A real thing, man, and congratulations on power, and big up yourself every time. Thank you, brother. Love, Oyago, and all right? Respect, respect. On behalf of the staff here the diaspora, and Mike, of course. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> After one year of the airwaves, the godfather of Caribbean radio, Gil Bailey, is back on New York Radio. It's Saturday morning on the Gil Bailey Show. We are getting down, people. Oldies but goodies. I love people. It's not everybody love me, but the few who love me. You work with that. It's good for you. Jack I know bless. everybody for love you. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. I'm bring problems in there. I'm more than <laughs> problem. You understand? Uh, yes, man, it's exclusive, you know. <laughs> yeah, I raise Mr. Bailey. Yeah, well. You know what I mean? You think it's exclusive. Ziggy, glad so, to have you down here. Love. Yes, Mr. Bailey. And my daughter gonna walk the wine. Yes, man, some red wine and all that. I sprint. Yeah, we're living it up. We're living it up. Yeah, I drink red wine. Yes. In Mr. Bailey, at Mr. Bailey's place. Trust me. We don't know how we can get any better than that. Right here, and come chat with me. So we keep it that. When I was in London, England, there was one of the most finest nightclubs by the name of Count Suckles Q Club of yeah. Prate Street. Yeah. And Mr. Carl Simmons was living in the same flat like me. And I used to come to work, to, from work, to home, practically five o'clock. Yeah. So he said to me one day, you come home so early, you don't have nothing to do. You know what I'm going to do for you? Come down to the club and teach you how to MC. Yeah. And you'll be one of, one of the finest Jamaican MC. I'm going to tell the world this. New York City, wherever you are watching us right now on television. His name was Little Stevie Wonder. He was 17 years old. And I did MC in the night. Well, I came over to United States of America. And then I caught up back with Carl Simmons. And he had me on the radio wiping off records. Yes. And it looked very interesting to me because the, the phones are ring and they're answering the phone. Yeah. They put me on for like two minutes and by the time I get one phone call, they take me off. Mm -hmm. So they say, listen, I see where you are interested in radio. 
I'm going to turn on to Mr. Lewis at 80 Riverside Drive, WHBI. Yes. And he did. And from that I started. Yes. I chat Patwa. Yeah, you saw Patwa on your program. Yes, because yes. I'm from Jamaica. Yes. Sir. And I grew on the street of City Kingston. Yes. So it's not bad word, it's just no. the way I talk. Yes. And the, the people them, take back the bad talk in Jamaica and take back the, the music where you play from yard. Yeah. Put them back on the banana boat and send them back and say, you believe it or not. Yeah. Today, they, the same banana boat music they were talking about. Yeah. If you don't play it in a dance hall, that's so nice. So while you were on radio, people were saying all this stuff about you? Oh, yes. Oh, definitely. Yes, definitely. Yes. Then I become, you know, the idol. Yes. And I'm glad and I thank them very, very much. Because right now, people who used to talk like the one bite off them tongue. Yes. They start to talk about the same Jamaican talk. Yeah. Because if you look on CIN news, when the ministers in Jamaica are uh, any prominent Jamaican talking, you can know yes. that they are from Jamaica. You can. Just stick to your language. Yes. Ten years. Yeah, ten years in life. Okay, yeah. all right. So that journey has been a long one. Very long. Right? Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. Then you take a break from music at one point. Why I did. did you take that break? Well, number one, my wife, Pat Bailey, she died. Yes. And it oh, got yes. to me. Yes. Then I got sick myself. <laughs> yes. So I didn't have no alternative but to take a break from radio. But my audience keep calling Sharon and calling me and I, when am I coming back on radio? Because they miss me. Yes. They miss my gospel shows. They miss all the shows. They miss my gospel boat, right? What are you doing to us? So I just decided a couple months ago, yeah. let me please my audience. I'm on the radio for over 40 years. In that a long years. time. Yeah. Oh my, man. Lots of years. A huh? lot of years. And believe That's it or not, just resting, the audience, they are so nice to and me. I do yes. Very, very, especially people in Jersey, all the boroughs, they are very nice to me. And I love them. We are having this gospel show on the 14th of October. Okay. We are on Linden Boulevard, that's 194 15 Linden Boulevard. We're asking each other, come on out and enjoy a good Sunday afternoon. Yes. Because it will be a special afternoon. It's a comeback Gil Bailey gospel show. Yes, so you know it go. It's not nothing normal. And Ziggy will be there yeah, with course. the camera from CIN. Taping Definitely. the show, so there are a lot of people, and we are giving away a 50 inch TV. Remember, people, wow. we are giving away a 50 inch TV. Yes. You pay $20 coming to a show and yes. leaving with a 50 inch TV. We always give away things yes. on the Gil Bailey show, it's yes. not a joke, people. It's not a joke. This is a serious thing. I'm a serious man, in whatever I'm doing. So, remember now, we need your support. Sunday, October 14th, um, gates open 4 p.m., showtime is 5 p.m. I'm just a simple Jamaican. Please, I respect people and I get respect from people. And remember, I'm on 6.20 a.m., everybody, every Saturday morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., who knows i might get more more time but let's let's work it small everything the coconut tree grows so everything grows and if you do like my show and you stick with me i'll be there listen vibe enjoy and be carried away by the sounds of electric earth Justix, aka rasta rock is the sound of blues rock reggae Father gave me that name. It means God's instrument, Jah's instrument. That's it. God, Most High Jah, Rastafari, and uh, sticks. You know, like a drummer because a heartbeat. You know, so it's like it's one. The drums are heartbeat, and God is the ultimate drummer. 
because it puts the beat in our hearts like an instrument of the most high job so yeah justice this is uh, something that um, people need to check out more because it's, it's a little different from the, the regular solo artists I have a band and I have a solo thing yes. but tonight you're seeing the solo thing as a solo artist because I'm, I'm a loop artist so I create a wall of sound on stage and you see you see me build the tracks and perform it and break it down and move it around so it's interesting you know it's not I don't think there's anyone in the scene doing what I'm doing so it's going to be good you know for you guys to check it out yeah. My sweet honey You're watching come chat with me and today we are at the rcm development and community services inc first annual luncheon at the Molinas at lake isles country club east Chester, new york and it's an organization supporting the rural communities in jamaica rcm said it's launch at a luncheon at Molinas at lake isle country club in east Chester, new york celebrate four years of supporting and partnering with schools in Jamaica and the Metro New York area. Teach us true respect for all service but to duty's call strengthen us the weak to cherish Give us wisdom, lest we perish. Our goal is to outfit in the 14 parishes one high school per parish that is really needed of a computer lab. When we say when we talk about a computer lab, what we do is completely refurbish the lab. We got the entire school room, we drop the ceiling, new lightings she dropped the walls and we said this is what we're going to do for, this, for the students in these classrooms and this has been very successful it is important to have education and the only thing to bring you out of poverty is education ago when we started RCM, um, Roy Claude and I thought we would be able to finance the computer labs in that we do in Jamaica. Um, after some serious um, consideration and analyzing all what we need to do, we realized that we need to bring partners in. And partners would mean a luncheon to launch our product and from there we will be able to raise the funds that we need to take us through all 14 parishes. Breeds there a man with soul so dead that never to himself has said, this is my own, my native land. Never forget our roots. In the age of advancing age of technology and information technology, if your young people are not equipped with the knowledge of the computer and, and information technology, then we are nowhere. So we are really appreciative of the support that Mr. Reed and his group is giving to us. You mentioned in your speech earlier about uh, the upliftment in Jamaica, you know, I mean, the bridges and the roads and all of the good stuff. Can you talk a little bit more about that for me, please? Well, you know, in Jamaica right now, uh, we are doing a lot of road work, uh, which is long overdue. We, we are doing 
record amount of improvements to our farm roads. We are doing record amount of repairs to other main arteries throughout the country. But if you just if you pay a visit right now to the corporate area, the capital city, you will see major road works taking place on the artery leading out of Kingston, Mandela Highway, uh, places like the Constant Spring Road, the Hagley Park Road. We have just completed the uh, uh, Barbican Square. Uh, we are doing the uh, three miles area. I believe that if we can educate a boy, he won't become gunman. Yeah. If we can educate a girl, she won't become a prostitute and end up on the street dead. Yeah. So the diaspora is working very hard to help the kids back home, giving the, give them a vision of what life is like and where they can go from here and the sky is the limit. Jamaica has a culture that is embedded in me. Yeah. And the whole point about it is that I, I actually migrated here about five years ago. Yeah. But I still live, eat, sleep, drink Jamaica. So whatever that can be done here, that can inspire, that can assist the whole progress in Jamaica, I'm all for it. Mark Shields, former Deputy Commissioner of Police in Jamaica and former Detective Chief Superintendent of Scotland Yard, will present at the 14th Annual CIN Lecture Series on the topic, Jamaica's Crime Monster, Can It Be Tamed? Stay connected with Come Chat With Me. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching Come Chat With Me. Tune in each and every Sunday right here on CIN. See you next week. My sweet honey.